Fingers in the way. Fingers in the way. Amen. How's everyone doing today? We're blessed, right? We're blessed. We're blessed. You know why? Because scripture says so. So a lot of times when we ask ourselves, we ask somebody, hey, how you doing? They base it upon whether they're feeling hungry, whether they're sweating, whether they're cold, whether they're hot. And, and those things fluctuate. Those things change. So next time somebody asks you how you doing, just say, I'm blessed because that's what scripture says. Because regardless of what's happening in our life, the Bible says that we are blessed. It says it in scripture. Anyways, what I want to talk about first of all, is I want to say hello to Stockton, California. Anybody that's from Stockton here? Lodi, surrounding areas, Manteca, Lathra. God bless you. God bless each and every one of you. You know, I, I don't know. Um, I was, uh, I got the phone call about this event from a friend of mine that we had did time together in Terminal Island and in Atwater. And he said, hey, he goes, um, my friend's parents are having this, this, this car show here, this event here. He said, you think you could come through? And I hadn't talked to the brother in a long time. It had been a while, you know. But anyways, what I want to share with you is this. Is I don't know who is here, and I don't know what you're going through in your life, but I will say this. If you have somebody that you, that you love that is out in the streets, that is doing whatever it is that they're doing in their life, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand or anything. I'm just saying if you have someone in your life, I want to take a few minutes to encourage you to not give up praying for them. Because the power of a praying mother, a praying father, a praying grandma, a praying grandfather, it, it, the Bible says that the Lord collects all the tears in a jar and he collects them. How do I know this? Because at five years old, my mom surrendered her life to the Lord. But you, if you got to remember, some of you that are, that are my age or a little older, remember how life was like out here during the 80s and late 70s. It was crazy. It was off the hood. People think it's crazy now. It was crazy. And I had two older brothers. So I, here I was, my mom getting saved at five years old, and, and she, her taking me to church. My dad was, was an alcoholic. And, and at the same time, you know, my, seeing my dad and, and seeing my brothers, and they were in the lifestyle, and seeing them and the influence it brought, and the lowriders and the lowrider magazines, and the Google magazine, and the teenager magazine. You know, I, I felt this pull because my mom would tell me, listen, you know, um, um, I want to have a Christian family and someday your dad's going to get saved and someday your dad's not going to drink anymore. And even as a little kid, I would laugh because I couldn't imagine my dad without a beer can in his hand. That was just so weird and odd to me. I couldn't imagine it. So I felt this pull, this constant pull all the time as my mom would take me to church and, and, and later on, like I said, I don't want to take a lot of time, but later on, I remember a pastor telling me, I went. I remember going to a church service, and I was there, and it was an altar call, and everybody's in front, and I was sitting in the back. I was a teenager now, and it was a visiting pastor. He didn't know me. He didn't know anything about me. He didn't know anyone in that congregation, and he points at me, and he says, you come here, and I turned around, look at him. I'm like, sure, he's talking to somebody behind me, and I said, me? He goes, yeah, you come here. Never, I've never met this guy, nothing. And I remember walking up as a young teenager, and he says, your name's David, isn't it? I got kind of scared, to be honest with you. I was like, how does this guy know my name? He says, your name's David, right? I said, yeah. He said, the Lord is going to use you. He goes, but I want you to tell you right now, don't forget this. You might forget my name, forget my face, that stuff doesn't matter. But I want to tell you this. You're going to reach an age where you're going to want to do what David wants to do. And not what God wants you to do. He says, please promise me that when that day comes, you will remember not to do what David wants to do. Because David, the enemy, wants to destroy you because God has a huge plan for your life. And I, as a, as a young teenager, you know what I mean? I, I kind of put it in, I don't want to say one in one ear out the other because I'm talking about it now. So obviously it, 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 it touched some part of me. But I continued to live my life and continue to do my thing and I started gangbanging and I started rapping. I started releasing CDs and music all over the place, flying everywhere, doing concerts and car shows and autograph signings and um, I belonged to a group called Dark Room Familia. And I went by the name of Sir Dino and at that time, man, my, my family didn't know what to do with me. I remember I would go to, to uh, uh, go to dinner at my parents' house and I would be uncomfortable because my pistol just lay it right there on the table and eat dinner with my parents. This is a Christian family, Christian home. My dad got saved three years after my 
mom. And my mom used to always share this verse. She goes, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. She will always tell me that. She would see me put a pistol. She knew I had a gun. She knew I was involved in stuff. And she would always tell me, this is the part where I want to tell you. If you have a loved one that's in that lifestyle, you need to speak life into them. You need to speak life no matter what the situation looks like, no matter what it looks like, no matter how, whatever is going on in their life, you need to speak into their life. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Because in the midst of me gangbanging, selling drugs, selling meth, doing all this and that, my mom would tell me, you are meant to serve God. You are going to do something mighty for the Lord. And I'm like, Mom, come on, Mom. By this time, I'm 18, 19, 20. I'm a grown man. You're not going to tell me what I'm going to do. I'm a, I'm a nationwide rap artist. I'm, I bought my house cash. What are you talking about, Mom? What are you talking about? This is what I. Well, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. And she said, well, I don't know nothing of that, but I do know as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And when I was five years old and surrendered my life to God, I surrendered you too, David. You belong to the Lord and that is it. Whether you come to him walking or you come to him on your hands and knees, you are going to serve God because I dedicated you to him. I am not going to stop. I pray for you until my last dying breath. Amen. Well, guess who won that battle? Guess who won that battle? Because the things of this world cannot overcome the blood of Christ. The things of this world cannot destroy anything. The Bible says that we come against the enemy and we destroy the strongholds of the enemy. So what I'm doing here today is, here's, here's the fact, right? Is if you are here, it's highly likely that you're already a Christian. And I don't want to be preaching to the choir. I don't want to be preaching to the choir, but what I do want to do with those of you is to encourage you that not only that, see, it led me down a life where I ended up getting an eight-year prison sentence in federal prison. And it wasn't until, that was my third felony, it wasn't until I was there in solitary confinement where I had to surrender my life. I said, God, I give up, I surrender. Obviously, I'm not doing this thing right because I keep ending up in a cell like this. I'm so sick and tired. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to change. I don't know how to change. I don't know how to change. And see, here's the thing. That's exactly what the Lord wants you to do. Because you have to quit trying to fix yourself and allow Him to fix you. Because you or I can't fix anything. You know, I get it all the time. I pastor a church now and I get people that come to tell me. They say, what do I got to do to change because I can't do it? And I said, well, number one, you will never do it. And they're like, yeah, great counseling, Pastor. I said, I'm just being real with you. You will never change you. You will never change you. You know what you do when you try to do fix things in your life? That's called behavior modification. And you're still straight going to hell. You're just acting like you're good. That's all that means. You're changing your behavior. And I'm just like, Lord, I don't want to change my behavior. I don't care what people say on the outside. I need you to do a work inside of me. And that's what I did. When I was in a solitary confinement, I said, Lord God, here's the deal, Lord. Here's the deal. If I give my life over to you, do you realize I'm going to be on a hit list? Do you realize what I'm going to have to face when I go back to the streets or when I hit the yard? Do you understand? So I'll tell you what, Lord. If you can really change me, then it's worth it. It's worth it. If you can really, really change me, it is worth it. But if you can't, and I got to walk around just acting Christian, playing Christian, but all this darkness in my heart is still going to say the same, I might as well die in the streets. I might as well die in the streets. So I said, Lord, if you can change me, then I want you to do it right now. In Jesus' name, come into my heart, Lord God, because I want to change. I want to change, Lord God. I want to change. And I saw the scripture that says, I will take out your heart of stone and put it in the heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. I also saw the scripture that says, you're a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. I saw the other scripture that said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I said, Lord God, if this word is true, if this Bible is true, then I want you to change me from the inside out. And it was right there, Sacramento County Jail, in the eighth floor, solitary confinement, where I felt a thousand pounds of weight come off of me. All of a sudden, something started to change. 
And I didn't understand it. I didn't have I didn't have a worship service. I didn't have a huge altar call. I didn't have a famous evangelist putting his hands over my head. I didn't have nobody. It was between me and God in a solitary confinement. I said, God, if you can change me here, then I know when I get out, you can change people out there. You know what now? It happened so fast, I, I couldn't comprehend it. And, and I want to share this. This is, this is what gave, see, all of us are different, right? There's certain triggers in your life. There's certain things in your life that'll fire you up, that'll entice you, that'll whatever it is. Because the enemy knows what those things are. And you know what those things are. For me, because I was brainwashed growing up, I was brainwashed to believe that, that certain people were my enemy. I don't care if I saw them at a gas station, if I saw them at a Walmart, if I mattered, it was just on. It was green light right then and there. Nothing else mattered. And I just, it was weird because as a young kid growing up in a neighborhood, I just knew I had to hate that person because of what they stood for. So here's the true test. I remember I got, I, when I got saved in solitary, it was time for me to go to court. And I don't know if any of you have been to Sacramento County Jail, but they kind of split. The, the, the jail's in half, and the, the, the elevators are in the middle. So everybody that grew up where I grew up was on this side of the jail, and the other ones were on that side of the jail, but when it was time to go to court, they would bring us in chains, and we would go down the elevator. And this is crazy, right? This is crazy to me. Maybe to you it's not a big deal. But I remember they shackled us up, put the chains on our feet, all the way up to the waist, hands like this, and they were chained to everybody going to court. And I remember they opened the doors to the elevator and I saw who was supposed to be my enemy, a whole line of them. This was a test for me. To you, it might not seem like it, but you know what? I felt no hate. I felt no anger. I felt no rage. I didn't feel no violence. I, I didn't, couldn't comprehend it. I didn't understand it. I'm like, Lord God, what you did is really real, Lord God. What you did is real, Lord God. I will serve you all the days of my life. I don't care if the world thinks I'm a fool. I will be a fool for you all the days of my life. That's why I am known now when I am convinced that Jesus Christ is the only one that can break the chains. He can break the chains of bondage. He can break the chains of alcohol. He can break the chains of adultery and then sexual addiction. He's the only one that can break the chains of violence and gangs. He's the only one that can set you free. There is nothing else. No one else can set you free. So guys, I, I want to end with this. Is I want to say a prayer. And I wasn't planning on it, but I feel led to because I'll tell you what. I remember back in the day, I had two 12-inch woofers in my trunk with 500 watts. And I would put my, my windows down. I would just bump through neighborhoods. Bump songs that were about violence and killing and gangs. And I truly believe that those words go out into the atmosphere of the neighborhoods. Because the Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and high places. So every time we're driving around, bumping our music, we're putting that out into the atmosphere because the gods of this world love that stuff, right? Because, I mean, come on, just be real. Isn't there certain songs that would just rile you up in a certain kind of way? So in the same way, I feel led to pray because the speakers are outside right now and this stuff is going out into the atmosphere and the Bible says that we don't fight against flesh and blood but against principalities in high places and it's time that we start to take ground because the Bible says that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. What does that mean? It means that the enemy is on the defense and we are the ones on the offense pushing. So if I could just end this in prayer, and we're going to pray for Stockton. Lord God, I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, that any time, Lord God, things are thrown out into the air, we cancel all those things in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for the city and the surrounding areas in the blood of Jesus Christ, because your blood is stronger than all things, Lord. Your, your blood breaks the back of the sins of this nation, this state, and this city. We release a thousand angels right now to this neighborhood. To
to the families and the children, Lord God, the husbands, the wives, the grandmas, the grandpas, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, for your gospel to be spread, for doors to be kicked wide open. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for every family that is here, that they be encouraged, Lord, that we can go forward. Because this, it, 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 it's, it's not a quick race. It's a marathon. And I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I just want to thank you guys. God bless you. If you did, were you some of my music, please. I have a booth over there. Just come introduce yourself. Well, one more thing. If you have a loved one that's in prison, our church sends out our, our, my transcripted sermons. Whatever I preach on Sunday, they're typed and we send them free to inmates. So if you have somebody like that, a loved one, please visit our booth over there where the paintings are at. It's a painting of Selena that I did. Go over there, give us the address, and we will send them a sermon.